will be enhanced and that uh, your relationship ultimately with Christ will be enhanced. Um, and I, so through these conversations, through, through sharing my testimony, through sharing my experiences, um, I hope that something resonates with you here or there and that you'll have something to chew on. It'll give you something to chew on and think about and pray over. All right. Um, all right. Catch the replay and make sure you share, make sure you share you guys. So, uh, that's my, that's what I'm do. That's what I do here. That's my job here. And, uh, let's jump in. So today our, uh, the topic of our conversation is three lessons I learned from Frozen. <laughs> and I'm sure, I don't know, maybe some of you don't know, haven't seen the movie Frozen, but I have seen it probably f one too many times. I can sing every song. I won't do that for you today. But uh, yeah, I, I know fr the movie Frozen, frontwards and backwards, like the palm of my hand. And um, through watching it, like the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, that's a cute movie. You know, not really thinking much of it. Um, but the second, third, fourth, hundredth time that I watched it, I really started to look at the storyline and the characters and what we were, <laughs> what they're really talking about, what they're really going through. Yes, let it go. Um, and so from, from watching it, I was able to take away three things about relationships that I thought would be cool to share with you here today. Um, so are you ready? You ready to hear what, what Frozen taught <laughs> me about relationships? Well, not really taught me, but um, reminded me about relationships. Oh, you guys had to go? Okay. We'll catch the replay, you guys. Make sure you catch the replay. Hey, that's you. Hey, hi, Chris. Hey, cousin. I didn't even realize that was you. Um, and by the way, for those of that you, for those of you who are on, please tap the, uh, your ears are ready. <laughs> please tap the screen to give hearts and you can click on the little guy down there to share this broadcast with your followers. Okay. So are we ready? We're ready. All right. Lesson number one, and these are all lines I stole from, Hey, from Canada. These are all lines that I stole from the movie. So, um, lesson number one. Um, Elsa is the queen, right? And Anna is, no. Yeah, Elsa is the queen and Anna is the sister, the, the princess sister. Anna meets a guy uh, and she decides she wants, they want to get married. All this all happens in the matter of one day. <laughs> Thanks. This all happens in the matter of one day, right? So she goes and she tells her sister, Elsa, I um, met this wonderful man and we want to get married. And what does her sister turn around and say? She says, you can't marry a guy you just met. And this one statement, hey, am I, this one statement um, was for me one of the most powerful points of this movie. Because she's talking, she's, she's really imparting a lot of wisdom to her sister. But of course, her sister's like, no, I found love. It's true love. And, you know, we were meant to be together and, you know, yada, yada, yada. She's completely blinded by the truth of the matter, which is you met the guy on what, and on, on today and you want to marry him today. Right? So poor Elsa's trying to impart some wisdom. <laughs> Jeremy, hey, I know you can do it. Um, but she, she tried, she's trying to impart some wisdom into her sister, trying to be like, hey, like, come on, come on, Anna. Let, let's focus. Think about what you're saying. Think about what you're doing. Think about what, an, what a decision like this, how a decision like this could impact your life, right? And so how this relates to us in relationships, in when we're dating, you know, we have to make sure before we decide to say I do, there are a lot of things that we need to make sure of. Now, I, I, I won't say that it's impossible to meet someone and things just really go at a fast pace and you realize that, wow, this is this person that God has intended for me to be with. I'm not saying that that's impossible, that that cannot happen because I believe that it can. It's rare. Um, yeah, you got to do your research though. It would be wise to do your research, right? I mean, it takes time, even after you're married, it takes time to learn about your spouse. It takes time to learn what they like, what they don't like. You know, all of those little things, things that, that get on their nerves. 
things that will get on your nerves. It takes time to learn all those things. And when you rush into a marriage, rush into a long-term committed relationship, you don't have the benefit of that whole dating and research stage. Dating, as I've said here before, is collecting data on the person that, you're, that you like. So if you don't take the time to collect any data, then you're really doing yourself a disservice. Um, and I think a lot of times, for us, at least I know, DNR, what's DNR? Dating and research? <laughs> Is that right? I know, at least speaking for myself, there's still only so much you can eat. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, so it would be wise to, all right, I was right. It would be wise to learn as much as you can before, right? Learn as much as you can while you're still in, you're still free <laughs> to change your mind, you know? So, okay, so I've said this before, and I'm sure many of you have said this before as well, but had I known then what I know now, some things would be different. And I'm not speaking specifically about my marriage, but I'm, th I'm saying just in, mar in relationships that I've been in, in the past. I know I've wasted so much time. I, I felt like I had wasted so much time with people um, whom I thought had my best interest in, in, in mind and come fast forward to the end of the story, they didn't. And we feel like, oh, well, that was a waste of time. Now, of course, there are lessons learned from every relationship. And um, so no relationship is failure unless you just can call it a wash and you don't even try to figure out what were the good things, what were the bad things, what were the lessons you can learn from the relationship. But my point is, if you don't give yourself a chance to learn about the person, to experience what um, that person, how that person experiences life, then it's harder for you. You will find more times where you will be saying to yourself, I wish I, I knew now what I I wish I knew then what I know now, right? So there's no reason to fast forward. There's no reason to, to jump to marriage. Um, really think about, really take time to figure out or to learn about the person that you're considering spending the rest of your life with. Because like Stephen said, after you're married, there's even more that you learn about your spouse. So if you can't deal with the person that you're dating, <laughs> it's going to be really hard to deal with the person that you marry. Um, so it's just wise also to get to know in your research and in your da dating, um, your data collection stage, it's just wise to also try to get to know their family. Um, find out about how they were raised, where they were raised. Did they have both parents in the home? Did they get along with their siblings? You know, all that kind of stuff. As much as you can find out about them in that, in that respect will help you to understand why they are the way they are. It'll help you to um, be able to better communicate with them. Um, and I think some of us make the mistake where we get into a relationship and we're like, oh my gosh, we have so many things in common. This must be the person that God has for me. When in actuality, it, it's not the person that God has for you long-term and, and intended for you to marry, to marry. Um, <laughs> oh, it keeps on freezing. So, so make sure that when you are, in that stage of bliss and you're, you're, you've met someone who you really like and you really enjoy spending time with, make sure that you take time to really figure out, get, get to some of those details um, about who they are so that when you are, so that when it does get to a point where you decide, yes, I want to be with you for the rest of my life, that you can, full, you can say that from a place of experience. You can say that from a place of I've known you through good, through bad, and I know, I know you enough to know that I can spend the rest of my life with you. Just word, word to the wise. So um, that was the first thing. The second lesson was when, um, when, Kristoff, <laughs> when Kristoff takes, uh, yes, on their, yes, times 10 on the family, you guys. Think, learn as much as of their family as you, as much about their family as you can. So when Kristoff takes um, Anna to meet his family, whom he calls the love experts, they do this big song and dance. And the main phrase of their song and, of the song and dance <laughs> yeah, have they ever killed anyone? That's uh, that's important to know. Did they have a felony? <laughs> that's important to know. Um, 
So when he takes them, when he takes Anna to meet his family, the love experts, they sing this song. And the main line of the song is, he's a bit of a fixer upper. And they're, what they're saying is, well, they're questioning why Anna and, 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 um, why Anna and Kristoff are saying, no, we're not getting married, we're not engaged, we're not dating, we don't like each other, that kind of thing. And they're saying, well, is it because he has big feet? Is it because he has, you know, he smells? Or, you know, so they're saying, yeah, he may have all these uh, flaws, but he's a fixer-upper. You can still change him. You can make him into who you want him to be. You can, you know, and yeah, we should always be praying about our new relationships, any new relationship that we get into. Um, but so the second lesson is we have this idea, some of us have this idea that the person that we meet can be fixed, can be changed, can be altered, can be refurbished. And I've said this here before, but people that we date, hey, good morning, Michael. People that we date, we should not be dating them with the intention of changing them. We should not be, they are not a piece of furniture that we buy at Goodwill or a secondhand store with the intention of bringing home and refurbishing. That's not what our plan should be. We sh that's why the dating stage is so important because when you, when you date someone, you're, like I said, you're learning who they are. You're learning, you're trying to figure out if you can live with this person for the rest of your life, right? Um, so dating someone and then entering into, into marriage with this person with the thought that you can change some of their flaws is not a good mindset to have. You should be entering into marriage with, with the uh, accepting them as they are, accepting them with their flaws, not trying to change who they are. You know, of course, there are areas in um, our spouse or in the person that we're dating that we wish maybe were a little bit different. But are you, are you, um, are those flaws insignificant enough for you to um, overlook and and love them for who they are? Yes, and people do change with maturity. People do change with, with maturity. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate and maybe I'm, you guys, I don't know, tell, tell me if I'm wrong, but there, I feel like there are a lot of women these days who have come to a point where they're like, well, you know, I'm, a, I'm of a certain age now and I really need to get married. So I'm going to, you know, kind of, uh, let go of some of my standards and, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna kind of like, you know, drop some of my standards and yeah, you know, I used to feel like if he had been married before that I didn't want to date him, but you know, now I'm willing to accept the guy that's divorced or yeah, now I'm willing to accept the guy that has four kids or yeah, now I'm willing to accept this and this and accept that. <laughs> Your boyfriend's nice and sweet. Um, so I, I, so again, I think we, there are women out there who get to a point in their life where they feel like I need to get married. I need to have kids. My, my biological clock is ticking and they begin to, um, lower the bar. They begin to expect less from the people that they date, from the men that they date. And with the idea that, okay, well, if he has, you know, four of the five things on my list, then you know, I can always just, we can always just, uh, I can always fix that part, that fifth thing later. You know, we take on these projects and we have this, this idea in our head that we'll be able to change those things. Trying to change my spouse can only, <laughs> right, right. When you try to change your spouse, you guys, it's not, it's not, it, it never ends well. It never ends well. They're, the only thing that you can do for them is to pray for them. Um, so, so yeah, so our, the people that we date, the people that we enter into marriage with, they're not Mr. Potato Head. They're not, you know, we can't put our, the ears where we want them to be. We can't make, put the nose where we want it to be. They are a complete package. They are a complete package. You can't go in and add anything different. You can't take anything away. They are a complete package and that's what you're buying. That's what you're saying you want to spend the rest of your life with. And if you can't honestly Say to yourself, I want to spend the rest of my life with you as you are in this current state, then run. <laughs> There's no point in you wasting your time. You have to be able to look at this person 
all of their flaws, the good and the bad, and say, 